Dr. Ron Eaglin here with another EGN 3613 Engineering Economics Problem Solving Session. And we're working on, let's see, what are we working on today? Module six. Some of those, of course, some of those calculations you get to do with module number six. First one, credit card, 14.4% APR. First calculation, what is your monthly interest rate? Well, that's pretty easy. It's APR divided by 12, monthly interest rate. 12 months in a year, not that hard. And what is your annual effective interest rate? Well, this one's a little bit more challenging. You've got to use an equation, which is, um, I mean, the full form of the equation is the one over uh, plus R over CK up there to the C minus one. Um, in this case, it's relatively straightforward. You take the APR, divide by the, um, in the you divide by the number of periods, uh, which is 12 up there to the 12 minus one, and that gives you 15.39. Now, what does this really mean? It means that when you compound monthly versus compounding annually, the amount of interest you pay per year is greater than your actual APR. Because the APR is if you compounded at once a year. If you compound it once a month, it's gonna actually be more interest. Now, you skip Four months of payment with an outstanding balance of 1800, what's gonna happen? Well, if you don't have fees and you know, penalties and all that, which you probably would, you can just simply calculate it as the monthly interest rate for compounding periods, F over P, which is relatively straightforward equation. That's the one I told you to memorize. One plus I to the N, okay? Where I is, is gonna be your monthly because that's the number of periods you got, to the N, and, and the N in this case is four because it's four months. Or you can actually make a little amortization table for each individual period. But guess what? They're all going to be coming to the same answer. All right, let's move to a more challenging one. This one actually is a little bit more, got some complexity to it because you really got to get into those equations. I put some little extra help here. What is the future worth of a series equal monthly payments over six years at a 9% and that's going to end up being an APR 9%. So first thing is, is okay, well, if you wanted to calculate with a quarterly compounding, then that would just be the APR divided by quarterly, which would be 4, 2.25. Or you can calculate the effective annual interest rate, which in this case is the APR up arrow to the, um, um, in this case, up arrow to the uh, blah, 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 blah. APR divided by the four up uh, to the fourth power minus one. That's the that same equation we just did. One of the ones that's a little bit more cap, more complex to do is what would it be if it was the effective monthly interest rate? This is one that you probably would want to calculate because, um, I mean, you are compounding on a quarterly basis, so you really only care about it on a quarterly basis, but you want to see what you're actually getting effectively every single month. That's the full equation. The one over R over CK up arrow C, um, up to the C power minus one. Well, the thing here that you've got to do, and if you read this very nicely, C is the number of interest periods per payment period. Well, the payment period is monthly, and the interest period and the um, quarterly means that there's actually three months in there. So C is actually one over three. And then K, which if you read on what K is, K is the number of payment periods per year. Well, that's 12. So what does this actually come out to be? Well, if you look at the equation, one plus the A, uh, B2, the AP, uh, APR over B4, which is the, the four, that's just the same thing as you had before because R over K is that. The C is one third, so that's up arrow one third minus one. If you actually put in the individual values for R, which is 9%, and then CK, which is one third, 
okay, at times 12, well that's four, so that's just the same as this number, four, remember I said CK, okay, it's just your, it's just your N there, and, um, and, and work this out on a piece of paper, just isn't that, it isn't rocket science, just, okay, so the number of payment periods per compounding period, that's that up arrow C, which in this case is three, there is a, well, a third. Okay. Now, if you want to work out what this is going to be, well, over the course of six years, that's 72 payment periods that are an effective of, of this number here, you can calculate the F over A, which is going to give you this amount because that's just multiplying it by the payment. Huh, that's pretty challenging. The next one is a little bit easier because you're looking at monthly and monthly. Well, what's the monthly um, effective interest? What's the monthly interest rate? Well, uh -huh, it's just 12. To, uh, the APR divided by 12. The effective interest rate is just that calculation that we did before. That's if you want to do it on an annual basis. But what we can do is we can calculate the payment on a monthly basis. We now know that the effective monthly is the same. It's the same. I mean, just nine divided by 12. So that's going to be F over A, the payment's 5,000, for 72 payment periods, six years, 12 months per year, 72, at that effective monthly interest. So that gives you an F over A. This is a straightforward calculation of F over A, 1 plus I to the N. I'll give that, you know, that's not a hard one to do. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's F over, F over A, so you have to do the 1 plus I to the um, to the end we're divided by uh, minus one. So, eh, 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 you know, whatever. Anyway, 475, 035. Anyway, you can do this. You can do, you can do the F over A calculations. Continuous. Hmm. Well, the trickiest part this of the continuous, you can always use the, um, the good old E to the R minus one calculation. The effective monthly, well, it's just that same thing divided by 12, okay? Six years, you've got an effective monthly. You can do it with the same F over A here. Pretty, again, relatively straightforward once you get the concept of what is that effective monthly payment, okay? F2, which is this guy right here, the APR divided by 12, Minus one, use that, F over A, there's your effective monthly, 72 periods, voila, and multiply by 5,000, that's it. Okay, not, I, mean, I don't want this to be convoluted, I put all those numbers up on there, everything that you can possibly calculate up on the screen so that you can actually work out those calculations yourself. I think the hardest thing to figure out in this case is what that C actually means. The number of compounding, uh, number of, um, let me read it again to you again. Number of payment, uh, sorry, the number of interest periods per payment period. Or interest periods per payment period. And if it's quarterly and your payment period is monthly, there's a third. It's a third in that, this quarterly one. Okay, we'll move on to three. You borrowed $150,000. Hey, it's not like a house or um, expensive vehicle. 30 years payment, variable APR. Oh, those variable APRs will get you every time. And this is a challenging problem. So let's lo look at how this. So, so, so the initial monthly payment's not that hard. Uh, a, over, uh, a over P. You know what you borrowed. You know your interest rate. Okay, you've got to, you can you got to calculate an effective interest rate because it is monthly and you can come up with your annual payment your monthly payment okay those are you know a over p see notice that in the a over p when you're doing it as a monthly okay it's easy to calculate that effective monthly interest rate it's just the apr divided by 12 which gives you that monthly and you can always do the a over p for this it's a straightforward calculation there's your monthly payment. If you were making annual payments, this is what it would be. But you're not doing annual payments, you're doing monthly payments. Now, here's where it gets fun. All right, so let's go over here and let's like, create an amortization table. 
balance. And I did this with the effective APR so that I could, because the number I wanted was what did I owe at year five when we had that change in APR? So I got the 150,000. I go ahead and I calculate using the effective, the annual payment, okay? Or in this case, the um, I can do the um, effective, okay? Which is, hang on, I'm gonna go over here. B7, the effective interest rate. So my annual, my amortization table is with the effective interest rate and the annual payments. I can do this all, by the way, also monthly. It's just that the spreadsheet would get much, much bigger. Either way, I'm going to come out with the same number that at year five, I owe $143,000, 143820 Pretty sad when you consider you've been making these um, payments, $15,000 a year for the first five years. Most of that's going to principal and interest. You haven't really put that much into it. It's, it's, when you look at this, you're like, oh my gosh. I've only I haven't even paid off 7,000 of this thing. I've actually less than 7,000 of this baby has been paid off. That is how amortization works, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I wonder if my, you can actually see these numbers. So let me do this. Let me move these over so you can actually see them. Anyway, that's the number I'm really looking for right there. What do I owe at year five? By the way, if I, if I scroll down on the amortization table, um, on this first amortization table, by year 30, it's going to go down to zero. And that's a great way to check whether you've got your amortization correct. Um, it's it's going to go to zero in the final set of payments. Well, I now know that I owe a 140, whopping 143,820 after five years of paying 1,296.93 a month. Um, but... Just like I did with that first day over P, I can now calculate the second one and I can get a new monthly payment. I think that's what it was asking me for. What is my new monthly payment? If an interest rate changes to 9.75, well, I've got what I owe, the 143,820. I just copied that from over there on the amortization table. Um, 12, I got a now, I, now I have a new monthly effective interest rate, our new monthly interest rate, and I have a new effective interest rate, I could calculate the new monthly interest rate. I'm not really interested in the annual payment. I am really interested in that monthly payment, which is that, okay, I've got, uh, now I've got a monthly interest rate of this, and I've got no longer 30 years, but I've got 25 years. So 25 times 12, that's going to give me that A over P, which gives me a monthly payment of 1281.63. Ah, boy. The, so as you can see what happens, I mean, it doesn't go up by a tremendous amount. That interest rate changed from 9 to 9.75. However, it does jack the payments up for those people with AP, uh, you know, uh, variable APRs. That's what happens. But you're going to be paying that 81, uh, those extra $75 a year, it looks like, roughly, for the next 25 years. All right, let's go to another one. Ryan. Oh, Ryan's got a number of payments that he puts the deposits that he's making. $1,000 now, 3,000 in four years, 1,500 for six years from now. 12% uh, interest. Woo, I'm going for that, baby. I'm going to get 12% interest. I'm putting money in. Uh, what will he be able to withdraw 10 years from now? Well, one thing that you can do, um, a really straightforward way to do this, you've got your interest, you've got your period, you've got an effective interest rate. Um, Okay, um, and it's compounded semi-annually, annually, so you got to do that effective interest rate on semi-annual payments. That's the term of two. Um, so you can go ahead based on that and you can calculate um, how much, because you're using your effective interest rate. Once you've got that, this is all straightforward. Calculate the future value of the thousand, the three thousand, and the five, and the fifteen hundred, and that comes out to eleven. 634 or create an amortization table again start with a thousand okay multiply that times the effective interest rate every single year but add in however many deposits you've got added there so this will just be adding in this number notice that i do it every single year but most of the years the add-in is zero and it gets me the exact same number um amortization table you take the number of the initial year Okay, in this case, it's a thousand because we deposited a thousand. 
you calculate the amount of interest you have or amount of interest you get back that you have from the previous year. One plus I to the N, but N is always going to be one because it's one year. And anything that you add into the balance. And you just keep doing that year after year after year, adding in these numbers as you go along, and that's going to give you that final number there. Okay, again, it's, it's, it's not horrible, but once you get into the spreadsheet, you can kind of work with this. It's not hard. And, and you, yes. Should you be able to do this on a spreadsheet? Oh, most definitely. Unless you really love plugging in stuff, you know, playing with that calculator and plugging in numbers. I'm going to also hopefully create a series of videos showing how to do this entire set of problems that I just gave you in Excel, also using Python. Because yes, should you know how to do Python programming? Most definitely. I mean, should I know how to? The answer is almost always invariably going to be yes, you should. All right, one last one here. Let's see, Atlas Transportation is installing temperature loggers in all its refrigerated trucks for monitoring temperatures during transit systems. Okay, oh, we're gonna get rid of insurance claims for $40,000 for five years. What does that actually mean? Um, when you're dealing with a refrigerated truck, okay, if the food comes out because that's usually what you do with refrigerated trucks you're shipping food and if the food spoils prematurely that's going to be insurance claim but if you can prove that the temperature was constant inside the variable range that it should be within you can reduce the amount of insurance claims that you have real problem is saying that you've got a compounded quarterly so guess what we've got an effective interest rate and by now you should be able to calculate that effective interest rate. Okay, so you've got using the effective interest rate and an annual, P, that's A, calculate the P. P is what you'd be willing to pay for this temperature logging stuff if this is what you're gonna, you're gonna save. 142244, so I'm pretty sure I can get that temperature logger for my trucks. I don't know how many trucks I've got. But, because uh, I do buy every now and then temperature logging, logging equipment, because that's one of the things I do when I consult. <laughs> and uh, they're not that horridly expensive, but they do. you do have to put the logging in, and you do have to have the computer, and you do have to have the maintenance on that. But again, um, they must have a lot of trucks because that is about, that is a lot of temperature loggers. <laughs> anyway, 142.244. I hope you guys enjoy these little problem solving things that can actually help you out in your problem solving. And uh, that's it for this one. Module number, and I'm looking at the book here because now I'm getting into it. I'm trying to remember which one I'm doing for which module I'm trying to solve. There we go. Module number six, have good calculations. Duplicate what I do on the spreadsheet. If you can duplicate what I've done, then you've actually learned something. And that's basically it. And you've got those spreadsheets to work with. They're always gonna be there. Make some notes to yourself so you know what they do. That's it, thank you.